Dear people of God, it is such a joy to come back to the presence of the Lord. And this is a beautiful evening where we have come to His presence. You know, God has something to speak to you today. He wants to communicate to you something which is in His heart. Let us receive that today. You know, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, the word which comes from the mouth of God is our food. It's our spiritual food, which in return becomes the food to our mind and our flesh and whole of our life. This evening, the Lord is waiting to bless us because the scripture says the Lord is mindful of you and me for blessing you and me so that we may stay blessed and be a blessing to people around us and that's the calling that God has on your life and my life. So before we could go to the word today, let me encourage you to share this message to your friends and your relatives, whoever in need. If you feel they need this message, don't ignore. Let not the devil stop you from sharing the truth of the word of God to the poor people whom you love. Hallelujah. So let us pray and sing a song to the Lord and then meditate the word of God. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful evening. Master, you minister to our hearts, our minds and our flesh, Lord, and help us to break the bread of your word so that we may experience and enjoy the complete nourishment of your word to our souls, our spirits and our bodies, O oh Father, and our lives, my Father. Because your word is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. And it pierces our joints and morals, thoughts and intentions of our heart that we may be absolutely healed and blessed, Father God. Master, use me, Lord, to bring your word to your people who are waiting for this truth, Lord. Bless all of us that we may be the testimonies for the glory and the honor of your name and the name of Jesus our Lord. We thank you Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, let us sing a song to the Lord and then we will meditate the word of God.
Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. As I told you, today the Spirit of the Lord has a word for you to tell you that your life may be transformed and may be granted that all that you have lost may be restored back to you from the very throne of God more than what you have lost because our God is a God who is a restorer you know restoring means it is giving back to you more than what you lost and that's what our Lord does dear brothers and sisters today we are looking into the word of God. You know, throughout the scripture, one thing we must understand, if we don't know the beginning, we will not know the ending. And each truth in the holy scriptures of the Bible, whatever it means in the beginning, that inherits the same meaning and power and the understanding throughout the scriptures. So it is very vital for us to understand what was the beginning, then only we can understand what we can have it which we have lost. So Let's go back to the same one man who about whom we all the time we talk about is none other than our first forefather, Adam. In the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, this is a most profound scripture regarding the creation of man. In verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This was the thought that was born in the heart of God. God said, Let us make man. Let us. Let us is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. 
and this tree on god was birthed with the thought and the desire to create man and this thought of giving birth to man was not in the image of any other creation but he wanted to create man in his own image after his likeness and let them have dominion over all the fish of the sea and over all the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth you know image and likeness the exact image how god is so god wanted man to be and likeness all the god had a characteristics or attributes that god wanted man to have it is not like what you and me see ourselves today today we are not in that image i'll come back to you that point so god decided here thought here to create man in his own image and likeness and verse 27 says so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them you know such a beautiful statement here god created man in his own image hallelujah that means we were looking like god adam was exact representation and the likeness and the copy of god himself after creating them god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth hallelujah exactly like him he created and exactly what power and authority and dominion that he had he transferred it to man he was not just like god in just person in person in likeness and in power and in authority in the overall his being he was exact representation of god then we see chapter 2 verses 8 onwards the scripture says god made him a tender of his garden the garden of eden he put him there you know all that he has the responsibility is to take care of the garden and then 
replenish the earth and subdue and have dominion over everything as king as god you know it's very easy for us to understand the dominion and subduing the earth but this likeness and image this is where we have a need of understanding praise god let me continue there god gave them the you know uh, authority or the permission to have his food from the garden and only one tree was there which god said not to eat the fruit of the tree that is a tree of knowledge of good and evil and then there was four rivers and the rivers were filled with you know uh, treasures of costly things and finally you know verse 15 we say and the lord god took the man and put him into the garden of eden to dress it and to keep it and adam was given the authority or the duty to dress the garden and to keep it nourish it and take care of it amen verse 18 the lord says and the lord god said it is not good that the man should be alone i will make him a help meet for him you know also god gave him a companion praise god help meet so they what happened god created woman and god gave him and all this story we all know but after everything was over then we see the enemy the satan comes into the scene and deceives eve and he robs the glory which god gave man here is what something very powerful adam lost today the holy spirit is speaking to you the matters which adam lost matters that adam lost the things that adam lost you know generally we know adam lost glory yes it is true but there are many things that are involved with that glory that we must know what we lost and also let me tell you all that adam lost god has already restored it back to us in christ so before that let me tell you what all those things adam lost when god created adam the very clearly the scripture says god created man in his own image and in his own likeness that means the scripture again clearly speaks us about who god is god is a spirit in that god does not have the body like you and i may have so adam did not had the physical body that you and i have now this is where we have to understand the physical body that you and i have now it is the state of the fall of adam you know once they committed sin adam and eve got the kind of body now which you and me have but before that they did not have this they had a spiritual body the body of glory like god you know one corinthian 15 chapter says angels have 
their own bodies we human beings have the bodies celestial bodies have different bodies similar way adam had heavenly body i believe if adam was created in the likeness and the image of god like god he had all freedom to move to any planet that god has created as god can go and god can be anywhere he wants to so adam was having that freedom wherever he wants to be he could have been we don't know from the point of his birth until the fall there is no record of how many years did adam and eve live together it can be long many years unnumbered because until the fall of adam they were not in time realm so during those years or during that time i strongly believe as it happened in the life of jesus after his resurrection any physical thing was not a barrier for jesus to move you know when jesus came after the resurrection back to earth he could go through the wall he could eat the man's food he could be here at one point of time and he could be at another place at another time at the time he met to more than 500 people you know that that's what his spiritual being the same was with adam Adam was created in that fashion. So I believe strongly. I believe this is my faith. I don't have anything as such recorded uh, truths in the scriptures, but I believe because the scriptures is God. God created Adam in His own image and likeness. He was able to travel any. planet any creation anywhere in the universe he wanted to i think he must have had to to all the stars of the sky and he might have visited many times where god was abiding the heavenly glory both of them must have visited the heavenly throne you know in the natural being they they must have visited god's place and god used to come here whenever they want to they used to go to god whenever god wanted to he used to come back here you know this kind of life adam had that kind of body he had hallelujah today what we have the physical body if we want to go to another place or in space we cannot we need the space so to go there but adam did not need that you know he lost that powerful blessing and also he lost the eternal life you know as i told you there was no life span until their fall there was no count of days and months and years until such time he had been created to live like god from eternity to eternity just because of that one small sin he lost that life i believe the moment he sinned that particular component which was the very 
image and likeness of God has been separated from him and only he remained a cage of flesh and there might be lot of alterations God made in the physical structure of Adam and Eve which we now know this is we know you may feel what kind of teaching pastor is giving no i am not giving you the message just this is an eye opener to understand how god is and how god wanted you and me to be hallelujah praise the lord you know the scriptures talk about all these things amen so adam lost sin separated adam from god sin separated adam's spiritual being and made him only a physical being earthly being and you know this is what happened that he lost that spiritual ability or that spiritual being who can be transferred or transmitted wherever he wanted he was limited to the earth an unlimited human being became limited human being like god is unlimited adam was unlimited as god was god is infinite so was man he lost all that everything he lost then you know god had a such a friendship with adam they used to walk together has adam eve and god most probably father son and the holy spirit adam and eve they used to sit together chat together walk together have fun together maybe they must have had parties together and you know this fellowship was not just a fun fellowship this is where god was sharing all the plans of his heart and whatever he wanted to do on the face of the earth everything everything whatever god has inside of him god is to talk to him and adam is to talk whatever in his heart is I believe Adam was the most intelligent man ever we can see on the face of the earth. Most probably Adam was much more wiser than the king Solomon. Hallelujah. You know what I'm trying to tell you the spirit of the Lord if he had not committed sin all that we must have inherited we have lost it hallelujah so this fellowship was of sharing it was of transmitting authority dominion power and everything has been it's like family you know in our family if we want to do something we we'll all sit together we plan together we work together we want to see that it has it will come through with a great outcome the same way god was working with adam and eve and eve regarding the whole creation the entire universe adam was not limited to earth hallelujah amen then you know the same friendship that which he had with god the father god the son god the holy spirit the same friendship he had with all the animals in the forest hallelujah and believe me even the wildest animals in the forest they used to salute Adam and Eve. They were scared. 
You know, in Psalm 139, Psalmist says that God wrought him fearfully and wonderfully. Fearfully. What is that fearfully? Entire creation was in subjection of Adam in the fear of authority as if God himself. Hallelujah. And he had the dominion over every star on the sky. Every planet in the space. Each and every living being in the universe were under his dominion. I can quote all of these scriptures, but let me tell you, just you understand this, this is more than sufficient. Hallelujah. Then we see, even Satan himself saw how powerful Adam is and what kind of authority and dominion Adam has and I believe strongly uh, Satan was filled with jealousy against Adam. He was waiting for an opportunity to somehow corrupt this first man. If the first seed is corrupted, the entire human race will be corrupted. If the first seed is corrupted, that first seed will lose all this heavenly glory and come under Satan's subjection. You know, this is very, very powerful truth. He had a brilliant understanding. You know, so much, it was absolutely the atmosphere and dominion of innocence. There was no presence of sin. There was no presence of evil. There was no presence of all corruption. There is nothing what you can see even today in his pre fall status. It was absolute heaven on earth. Hallelujah. And the most powerful thing about Satan is Adam had freedom from Satan. He was not under Satan. Rather, Adam had authority even to command and rule over Satan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Adam had the complete knowledge about God. And he had the wisdom beyond measure. You know, today we know a very little about God. That's what Job says. We know very little about God. But Adam knew God. Like a bride knows her groom. That much in intimate relationship was Adam with God. They knew God personally. They never read about God. They were in God. They were with God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one, one key of his wisdom. Just imagine this part. You know, he was such a wise man. And secondly, 
such a power and authority this man had whatever adam has said till date they have not changed let me illustrate you one thing you know on the day god appointed adam in the chapter 2 of genesis verses 19 18 and 19 god brought all the living beings before adam and said let me see what adam will name them you know every all kinds of birds all kinds of creeping things all kinds of animals all kinds of fishes you know that day adam named all these living creatures hallelujah till date what name adam called is the same name today you know for elephant that day adam named this is elephant till today the elephant is elephant we cannot call it donkey but you know there are many things which man named after fall then those names will change now and then you know all that man does now is prone to change but what adam did in the image of god is forever the same thing And on that day, he said to Eve, "She is woman. Till day, woman. Hallelujah. That cannot change. That that means so much of power he had in his words. What he said that day, till day, the same things are called. No changes. No matter which country, the same names. Hallelujah." elephant is elephant no matter where you go whether it's africa america europe or india wherever it is because adam named that hallelujah praise god then he had all the power to do good then he was a man with complete self control so much of long time he lived with god walked with god but finally devil could not deceive adam so he chose to deceive eve again if you can see adam had all right to eat the fruit of the tree of life but God tested his freedom the the test was only simplest test God wanted to see whether this man will fully keeps the word of God or chooses his own free will the test was not about satan and god the test was between god and man God wanted Adam to be in submission to the word of God and his command by his free will or his test was whether this man submits with his own free will or he chooses his own free will that's what the test and that's where the failure happened hallelujah and uh, Adam had a big home not like you and me he had the whole garden of eden as his palace you know this is a very powerful truth big palace you know after he committed god said sin god said with sweat you will earn your food 
that means until that day there was no sweat to adam which means the whole being of his life and the whole environment that he was living there was nothing even a smallest a tiny dot can be a waste or a discharge from his body or any other creation absolutely perfect hallelujah it may sound funny but let me tell you i think they did not have the organs of waste discharge from the body no and there was no bathroom or toilet toilet in the garden of eden there was no need because all that they eat is just nourishing there was no waste so there is no need of those organs and the same condition will be in heaven later when we go to heaven we will be neither male or not female we will have the heavenly bodies and i think this is my thought please forgive me we will not have that kind of organs which discharge the waste from out of our body because heaven is a perfect place and adam was in a perfect place can you imagine what he lost hallelujah praise god and above all he lost the glory of god you know what is that glory the love of god god's love his glory the very presence of god is glory and love he lost that presence he lost that love he was absolutely detached from that when he sinned against god hallelujah and as a result he lost holiness he lost righteousness and you know until then he never had any sickness no curse no sickness you know the entry of sickness entry of sin entry of corruption in the body entry of temporal life took you know the place in adam and eve hallelujah praise the lord and every single blessing that they had in the fellowship with god they lost absolutely lost and over and above when god came and asked adam adam where are you the sins power us so much instead of exposing himself before god he hid himself and when questioned he blamed the partner when the partner is asked she blamed the serpent and because of that adam the that means seed of man seed of woman earth animals and ground all five areas have been cursed by god in chapter 3 not only that god threw him out of the garden of eden and protected the tree of life he appointed the angels with the you know swords of fire you know why i thank god god appointed those two angels to protect the tree of life after committing sin if they had 
that fruit they might have remained eternal beings in sin and judgment god may not have had any chance to open up the way for salvation of their lives that's why god shut the door for the tree of life though man failed god remained faithful he said through the seed of this woman i will crush the head of satan and i will restore back what adam had lost and that's what did god do through jesus our lord today all the sin and the effects of the thing and all the you know implications that came along with sin that adam committed the only way that we can come out of that and be relieved from that and free redeemed by that is through believing in jesus christ jesus died to pay the penalty of all this adam lost and he bought back he purchased our redemption through his blood and through his death that's why the bible says if we believe with all of our heart that jesus is the lord and he died for our sins and he was resurrected for living for god and confess with our mouth that he is the lord we will be redeemed from that curse and from that sin and from that lost life and we will be restored back whatever adam lost not only whatever adam lost but more than adam lost we will gain it back by believing and submitting our lives to the lord jesus christ that's why jesus said i am the way i am the truth i am the life no one comes to the god except through me hallelujah thank god god has made a way for us to get it back through the death burial and resurrection of jesus my friends imagine what we have lost but be encouraged that you have a chance to get it back there is no to feel bad or regret what we have lost because of adam sin if we make one choice today that i want it back and make the lord jesus our personal savior we will get back all that adam lost and much more than that because today what we gain is not adam's position today we get back the position of the son of the living god that's much higher than what adam had hallelujah so let me encourage you my friends today if you have heard the gospel repeatedly do not postpone to trust christ give your life to the lord and enjoy all that god has placed for you and be that spiritual being which adam lost and enjoy the whole universe which god has made for you and me let me close here this prayer father in heaven we thank you for this beautiful evening holy father indeed it is a great loss which happened to the whole mankind by the fall of adam but lord we are thankful to you you sent your son jesus 2000 years ago and lord you offered him as the atoning sacrifice on behalf of us and whatever we had lost you have restored to us through the death burial 
and resurrection of Jesus. Through his blood, you have remitted our sins of Father God. You have brought us remission, forgiveness, so that we may gain back the life that have lost through our forefather Adam and Eve. And we can inherit your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Father. Open the eyes of our understanding, Father, that we might see what great life you have kept for us, oh Father. That which we can have, Lord, just simply because of your grace and your mercy by trusting in the one and the only name of your Son, Jesus, our oh Father. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Lord, I pray for all the brothers and sisters who are watching me over YouTube and Facebook. Lord, I believe you have spoken to your people a lot and you, have, you are already at work in each one of our lives. We believe the work that you have begun, you will complete it on the day of your son, Lord. We will stand before you as your people. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my friends. If you have been blessed with this word today, share it to your friends, that they also may be blessed by the Lord. You know, I would like to remind you once again, I come to you every Wednesday evening at 5.30 with an English message and on every Sunday I come to you at 4.30 p.m. in the Canada sermon. God bless you and be blessed. Stay blessed.